Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Natalia Moczulska and this is the news. The Polish Parliament has passed an amendment to the Supreme Court. This is one of the European Commission's main conditions for unblocking funds from the National Reconstruction Plan. Now the bill will go to the Senate. And this is where the stairs begin. The opposition is already announcing that it will file amendments. However, there may be a problem with their rejection by the same. 444 deputies voted, 203 in favor, 52 opposed, 189 abstained, the same passed the law. The draft amendment to the Supreme Court will now go to the upper house of parliament. The Senate's next session is scheduled for February 8th, but it is possible that it will be accelerated. We are waiting for the work in the Senate. We hope that Mr. Speaker Grotsky will very quickly send the bill to the procedure and then we will have the president's signature. Initially, the bill was to be processed back in December, but after President Andrzej Duda's statement, who called for calm and constructive work on the amendment, the decision was made to proceed normally, rather than in an expedited manner. The president has set the framework within which all justice reform projects should fit, and that framework is the Constitution and its provisions and the permanence of judicial appointments. It is possible to sign, not sign or refer the bill to the Constitutional Court. The amendment to the law on the Supreme Court will help fulfill a key milestone through which Poland will receive funds from the National Reconstruction Plan. This is to include more than 30 billion euros in grants and low-interest loans. First of all, it's about ending one dispute. We look to the East, we look to the West, and this dispute in the West we want to end because the real enemy is in the East. And I think that all Polish people are aware of that. According to the draft amendment to the law on the Supreme Court, disciplinary and immunity cases of judges will be decided by the Supreme Administrative Court and not by the Supreme Court's Chamber of Professional Responsibility. All Solidarna Polska deputies voted against the amendment to the law. Solidarna Polska does not agree to financial blackmail from the European Union and changes under pressure of this blackmail and changes under pressure including the functioning of the Supreme Court. Members of the Poland 2050 parliamentary circle were also opposed. You cannot vote under the pressure of blackmail from a man who thinks he can falsify Polish people's thinking about what is the truth, what is law versus elementary honesty. The way Poland 2050 voted was a surprise to opposition deputies as well. One should help so that money from the European Union is there and not thinking of ways to block it. The majority of the opposition decided to abstain from the vote. Of course, we appreciate those who acted in a more reasonable manner than usual. We appreciate that part of the opposition understands that these measures are important for Poland. I am a bit shocked that the opposition did not support this project. The same also voted today for an amendment extending the laws of Akatio Legis from 14 to 21 days. The eyes of the whole world are on Soledar, the town of less than 10,000 people in eastern Ukraine, which is currently the subject of fierce fighting. The Russians are trying to trumpet their success, claiming to have captured the city. Kiev, however, denies these reports and assures that Ukrainian soldiers are still resisting. The Russian side, particularly Wagner's group, claims to have captured the town of Soledar. Kiev denies these reports and indicates that Ukrainian units are still fighting. I have held another meeting of the chief's general staff. Of course, the key issues are Sovedar, Bakhmut and the fighting in Donetsk. The city is located 10 kilometers northeast of Bakhmut. Analysts point out that the eventual capture of Sovedar by the Russians will not make much difference to the ongoing war, although it will make it possible to outflank Bakhmut. Both sides are suffering heavy casualties. The night in Sovedar was hot. The fighting continued. The enemy has thrown almost all the main forces in the Donetsk direction and is maintaining a high offensive intensity. This is a difficult phase of the war, but we will win, there is no doubt. Russian propaganda is already proclaiming great success, despite the fact that Russian troops have mostly been in retreat in recent months. The desperation of the Kremlin media is evidenced by the fact that they reported the alleged destruction of four Bradley vehicles. Meanwhile, the U.S. machines have yet to arrive in Ukraine. Next week, the United States will begin training Ukrainian soldiers to operate these combat vehicles. 
The Russians are eager for success on the battlefield, which so far they have not had. The prospect of Western countries handing over German Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine is getting closer. On Wednesday in Lviv, President Andrzej Duda declared that Poland will hand over a company of tanks as part of a broader coalition of countries. As you can see, the logistics of the war are moving in such a direction that we will receive all the armaments we need. For now, we are waiting for an official statement from the Western coalition that a final decision has been made on tanks for Ukraine. Finland and Denmark want to participate in the initiative for the joint transfer of German Leopard tanks. European Commission head Ursula von der Leyen also expressed support. Germany has announced that it will not block the decisions, but has not yet received requests for approval from Poland and Finland. Meanwhile, Berlin does not want to hand over its tanks. There is a difference between making decisions for oneself and preventing the decisions of others. Germany should not interfere when other countries make decisions to support Ukraine, regardless of what decision Germany makes. Countries such as Austria, Canada, Greece and Norway have tanks from the Leopard family on their equipment. Meanwhile, Britain wants to donate modern Challenger tanks. That's Western countries have come to the conclusion that it is probably high time to equip Ukraine with the tools to regain the lost territories. The Ukrainian Prosecutor General's office has reported that Russians have damaged more than 3,000 educational facilities in Ukraine since the 24th of February. Nearly 340 have been completely destroyed. As a result of the hostilities, 453 children were killed. President Joe Biden seems to be in some serious trouble. In his private residence in Wilmington, Delaware, secret documents from his time as U.S. Vice President were found. Interestingly, a few days earlier, confidential files were also found in his Washington office. The U.S. President says he does not know where the documents came from, but assures that there must have been a mistake. That mistake, however, could cost him dearly. On December 20th, President Biden's personal counsel informed Mr. Lausch that additional documents bearing classification markings were identified in the garage of the president's private residence in Wilmington, Delaware. President Biden's counsel informed Mr. Lausch that those documents were among other records from the period of the president's service as vice president. The FBI went to the location and secured those documents. My lawyers reviewed other places where documents in my, uh, of from my time as vice president were stored and they finished the review last night. They discovered a small number of documents of classified markings and storage areas and file cabinets in my home and my, in my, my, my personal library. This was done in the case of the Biden Penn, and th this was done in the case of the Biden Penn Center. The Department of Justice was immediately, as was done, the Department of Justice was immediately uh, uh, no notified, and uh, the lawyers arranged for the Department of Justice to take possession of the document. So you're going to see, we're going to see all this unfold. I'm they confident. Knew, they knew this has happened to President Biden before the election, but they kept it a secret from the American public. He goes on 60 Minutes, criticizes President Trump, even knowing what he has done, and he wasn't president at the time. Now we find another location that it's at, but he refused to answer. His press secretary won't answer the questions. We, you watched them leak photos of sitting out files of President Trump. Where's the photos of President Biden's documents? Where are those photos at? He knowingly knew this happened going into election, going into interviews. This is what makes America not trust their government. Yesterday, Russia released a U.S. citizen who had crossed into the Kaliningrad exclave in the first weeks of Moscow's invasion of Ukraine last February. U.S. Navy veteran Taylor Dudley, 35, was backpacking in Europe when he crossed the Polish-Russian border in April. Jonathan Franks, a lawyer who represents families of Americans detained overseas, said in an email to reporters, Dudley's circumstances while in Russia were unclear, and his case had not been previously publicized. A U.S. embassy representative in Warsaw was also present at Dudley's release. The Richardson Center thanked U.S. officials, as well as businessman Steve Menzies, for helping secure Dudley's return. So the fate of Taylor Dudley, who had been detained by the Russians since April of 2022, stood as a matter of grave concern for all of us here who blueprinted, constructed, and realized a concerted effort for his release. 
As chairman of the Steve Menzies Global Foundation, dedicated to bold action that results in wins for our country and individuals like Taylor and other hostages and prisoners we have been able to rescue over the years. This is a proud moment for all of us. Bill Richardson, a former New Mexico governor and U.S. ambassador to the United Nations who has helped free Americans detained abroad, met Dudley at the border and worked on the case for months. Our work is not yet done. We are continuing to work on the release of Paul Whelan and other Americans held in Russia whose cases are less known. Just because you have a high profile and you're famous and there's a lot of public discussion of your case doesn't mean that lower profile cases like Taylor's should not be pursued. We should never let our hostages stay and not be protected and brought home like Taylor who's a Navy veteran. As usual, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Please stay tuned for Paul and Daily Weather, Paul and Daily Business, and some of our other programs. But for me, it's have a wonderful weekend.